So I'll present uh, the theory of access uh, created by a Russian life design group called the Charlatan Theorists. So it's a framework that aims to help the GM and the player understand what kind of experience is being brought out to the real world by the player after the LARP. For a GM, it's a way to structure the player's story and make it more focused. And for the player, it's a way of structuring the after LARP experience and understand if a LARP has changed them, has affected them in a way, uh, through what instruments and how exactly. Now, we have these uh, three basic kinds of... Oh, shit. <laughs> oh my god, what am I going to do now? Play? Okay, uh, so now we have uh, these three basic uh, kinds of experience that we as GMs can provide quite well to our players through LARPs. Uh, the first thing is thrill and excitement, the chance to win, to achieve one's purpose, and it's especially relevant to the gamist agenda. And the second thing is surprise and astonishment, the feeling of amazement. And the third thing is the emotional experience of, well, all kinds. We can see these three things as three basic, uh, basic ways of structuring our LARP uh, and the player's storyline. We'll call the one that deals with thrill and chance to win the axis of action, because it's actually about doing things in the LARP. Uh, the second one that deals with surprise is the axis of exploration, because it's about exploring the world. And the third one is uh, the, one, the one that deals with emotions is the axis of feeling. So what do we need to do to advance uh, to push the player forward along one of these axes. Uh, for the axis of action, the one that drill deals with thrill and excitement, uh, we actually, uh, the most basic thing is to really make her want to win. Uh, we need to create some kind of goal for the player and make her really feel how important winning is. Uh, the risks and the stakes have to be high and the obstacles hard, but uh, still surmountable. And uh, the difficulty of what has to be done should gradually increase. Uh, the other thing, uh, like one could expect that nothing has to be done in advance for the access that deals with surprise, because, well, you don't expect anything and then surprise. But no, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Actually, to make it a big thing, we have to prepare quite well. We need to set the field of inquiry for the player uh, to, like, make him really want to look for something. And uh, then we need to arrange for him a way to use some kind of scientific method to make uh, observations and then to suppose something based on these observations and to test it inside the game and to draw some conclusions to make it fail, to create uh, different uh, conjectures and all. And uh, the possible outcome of it is uh, some kind of observation or generalization. Like, wow, now I see how it really works. Uh, it's, and of course, it doesn't have to be all about like science, although we are using some kind of scientific method. It can easily be a story of understanding the other person or looking for the criminal or whatever. It's just about discovering things. And uh, the third thing, like when we deal with emotional experience, uh, we, well, the key notion to it is immersion, of course, because we need to make the player share her character's values and, uh, for example, get them in conflict with the rest of the world. And uh, the emotions also tend to increase from being shared with the other people. And another way to make it bigger is to give the player some space for the in-game reflection. And, well, of course, bleeding is uh, another way, a very efficient tool to make someone advance along the axis of feeling, although it is, well, in some cases, it can be considered morally dubious or something. Now, <laughs> the question is, uh, how far can we take the player along the axis? What are the highest peaks that can be achieved through LARPing? The rare and precious moments that sometimes happen to us and get carried out to our everyday life and are remembered sometimes like for years. Uh, so, well, these are the axes again, and these are the high peaks. So. We call the highest peaks of, of the action axis the heroic deed. It is going beyond our borders. It's doing more than we thought we were capable of. Making a great sacrifice, for example, something like that. Uh, the extremity of the exploration axis if, is revelation. It's a form of an insight. Like, that's how it works in the world. And the best examples of it are not only relevant for the LARP setting, of course. It can be a sudden analogy, a metaphor, a truth about the universe that 
is discovered by the player herself. So for the player, it would never be a banality. Like, oh my god, I played Halat Kisar, and now I know that this is that, and it works in Palestine like this. Or maybe it was a LARP on 19th century women, and now I see that not so many things maybe have changed. Uh, <laughs> Okay, and so as for the feeling access, the extremity of it is catharsis. And it's in a way close to revelation, only that the things are being discovered about ourselves, not about the world. Suddenly we discover some parts of our personality that usually remain hidden. We get some new vision of ourselves. So that's basically it. And uh, now I have two remarks. Like uh, first, that to advance the players along the axis efficiently, we usually have to make them oscillate, in a way. Between, we need to create the tension between winning and losing, being capable to do something and unable to affect the situation, between understanding and misunderstanding. So it's like fair for all the three axes. So like the peripatias work for everything. And second thing is, of course, no story can stay within the limits of only one axis. Uh, but it's a helpful tool to think of what kind of experience do we want to the player to bring out to the real world? Is it the experience of winning or losing, of achieving some, something or losing it all? Is it some new vision of the world that surrounds him? Or is it some new understanding of the player like or that it has of, he has, her, she has of herself? Well, thank you very much. <laughs>